Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative for Atlantic British, and in this video we're going to show you how to change the front brakes on your 06 to 09 Sport with Supercharge, which would be equipped with the Brembo brakes. Now there's some differences obviously between the Brembos and the regular front brakes you find on the non-supercharged or on the LR3. And first and most obvious is the size of the caliper. This is twice the size of the front caliper that you're going to find on the normal vehicle or non-supercharged. One of the other differences is that this caliper is mounted directly to the knuckle in the back. There is no separate mounting bracket. This is a fixed caliper. It uses four pistons in there to compress these pads to make contact with the rotor. You'll see the rotor is a little bigger than what you find on the standard size Sport and LR3. Also take into account, and in most cases with the Brembo's, you'll probably be replacing these a little bit more often or sooner than you would with the regular brakes. They have a very high friction capability, and because of that you give up a little bit of the wear factor. So, especially if you have the supercharged, and more than likely you'll like to play with it a little bit, so you're going to wear them out a little faster. So you want to check them on a regular basis. So essentially what we're going to start off with we're going to remove these two pins and this anti-rattle clip and then cut this wire right here. This is the pad sensor. In most cases you're going to break it anyway trying to remove it from the pad. You always make sure you get a new one when you order your brakes. It's uh, usually the best way to go on these. You definitely want to replace the rotor. These rotors wear down relatively quick and they're very close to wear out size to begin with. So when the pads are worn out you can see it's actually cut a well where you can see a raised area on both air sides of the rotor where they're not making uh, uh, contact. So if this scoring and whatnot is here, these rotors cannot be resurfaced. You just replace the rotor, replace the pads, make sure you get a new pad sensor. So very simply, what you may need to go out and get some tools. One of them is going to be a long punch. Now this one in particular, this is a uh, 5 30 seconds long punch. And you're just going to basically set it up there and you're going to drive out the top pin. It drops right out of there. And you can see you got a fair amount of tension on these, which we'll deal with when we go to put this back together. But then you can just simply turn that down, unclip it, and pull it out from the other, the other retaining rod. And we'll tap that out as well. Now usually in most cases when you get new pads you don't get these pins. So before you reassemble it we're going to clean these up and put a very light coating of dielectric compound on them just to offer up a little sliding capability along with a little bit of silencing too and then you won't have a raw metal on metal from the pad to the rod. Take a pair, a small pair of diag cutters and we're just going to cut that wire so we can take the pad out of there. Now, before we take the pads out, and this is the biggest trick to the Brembo's, but because of its size and because of the way it's designed, once you've removed this, it's very hard to get all four pistons all the way in. You're going to fool with it for a while. So, what you do is, before you take those pads out, we're going to compress them, the pistons, You want to work that pad so that both pistons are fully retracted back into the caliper. And you can tell because you'll see the back of the pad almost flush with the body of the caliper. And then we're going to stick that screwdriver in there and that's going to hold that one in place. We're going to grab another screwdriver and we're going to do the same to the back. And that's going to compress those pistons all the way in so that when you go to reassemble it with the new pads, it's all going to drop right on. And now we just slide the pads out. There's one. And you can see how thin they get. And what happens is they get too much thinner. They're not able to dissipate the heat as well. And heat is definitely the major enemy of brakes. Too much heat and the material breaks down or could even come apart. So you want to catch these before they get too thin. 
So now we're ready to take the caliper out. We're going to slide that off to the side. Before we do, we have a bolt right here. It has a 10 millimeter head. We're going to remove that bolt so that we can get the hoses and the wires out of the way because the top bolt that holds this caliper in place sits right up in here in the knuckle. All right, so piston's fully compressed, pads are out. We've cut the sensor line, which we're going to show you how to replace that. We've taken the bolt out. This is down out of the way. Now we have two bolts in the back that hold this caliper in place, and they're 13, 16, so actually you could use 21 millimeter, 12 point, not six point. Again, uh, like we've run into with the, uh, the rear brakes and some of the other front brakes on these, they seem to like the 12 point. So you need either a 12 point socket or any of these new gear sockets that are out now, we'll grab that bolt. It takes a fair amount of force to break it loose, lock onto it, put some weight, as they do torque them in. And then we'll take the top and bottom bolt out and swing this caliper out of the way. Alright, so now we have the two bolts out, we're going to slide the caliper out. Now this is a fairly, this is a heavy caliper, it's pretty large, and you don't want to hang just the weight of the caliper on the hose, you could end up causing damage to the hose. So, we've taken the speed sensor wire off the yellow clip, just to give us a little more slack. I like to use these hooks, they come on the ends of these uh, the, the rubber bungees, the heavy rubber bungees. This is a pretty strong hook. Uh, you could probably take some metal wire hanger, but you're going to need to make two or three strands because this will be, this is kind of misleading, this is very heavy. And we take the small end of that, and hook it right into that hole in the frame, disconnect the caliper, pull that forward so it gets a good solid bite. Now that'll hold that caliper up and out of the way so you can get the rest of your job done and safely so it's not going to come down on your hand or any other part of your body where it can do some damage. So now we've got just the rotor to contend with now. And we have a number, number 50 Torx head bolt and this is basically for assembly. They run these in just to hold the rotors in place as the vehicle's going down the assembly line but it does make easier installation when, when, by using it. So. Usually the best way to knock them loose, and they will get, they can get frozen in there. And give it a few, a few wraps just to kind of break things loose. Now I use a hand impact on these, but you can probably get at it with a ratchet, but I find the hand impact works best, especially on the initial shot to break it loose. Okay, we run that out. Now, getting the rotor off, we're going to have some corrosion built up between the rotor and the hub. And so we're going to give it a couple shots. And if we hit on the flat between the studs, rotor and hub, it should break that loose. Now, if you want, if you're not quite certain of your aim with a hammer, you can get some rubber hose that you can cut into pieces and put over each of the studs so that you don't miss and damage the threads on the studs. So I'll just give a few shots. See, once it breaks loose, it'll pop out. And just lift it off and out. It'll take a small wire brush. You want to clean up around that area of the hub before you put the new rotor on. And if you have access to either Never Seize or some dielectric compound, just a very, very thin coat, just enough to break down that, that uh, corrosion. And then also, what will happen is when you put your wheel on and you have some lubrication on the outside edge of this hub. Later down the line, if uh, you should need to remove the tire, it'll come off a lot easier. You won't have to worry with trying to knock that tire off that off the uh, hub itself because they can grab on pretty hard. So we're at the point now. We're fully disassembled. We're going to start putting it back together. So now we're going to put our Brembo brakes back together. Before we put the rotor on, we're going to orient the lockdown bolt to where it is on the hub so that when we get the brakes on, we're lined up in the right holes. This is a pretty good rotor, it's got some weight. So, we hold that in place. Get that started. And again, this is a number 50 Torx. Run that 
in until it seats down. And we'll just set it, give it a little tap just to lock it in place. And now our nice big heavy caliper. It's more awkward than it is heavy. Now you can see we're putting it on without the brake pads in place because we're going to install them after we put the caliper on. Alright, so we mounted up the caliper. We got the two back bolts nice and tight. Before we slide the uh, pads in there, just to show you, you get a lot of buildup and whatnot in there. So I take these narrow little wire brushes and just run it through there and get some of that buildup out of there. It'll make installing the pads that much easier. Usually they're going to be dirtier on the bottom than they are on top, but either way they're all going to still have that build up in there. These are our new pads. You can obviously see the difference in the thickness. And we're just going to slide those down. And you just need to wiggle them a little bit, but they will go in. It's relatively a tight fit and they do that so they don't rattle around so bad. Now, pay careful attention because I have seen it done that you can accidentally, if you're not paying attention, can put that pad in backwards, which is not a good situation. Make sure your material is facing the rotor. Now, if you remember earlier when we took the pins out, say so we're going to clean them up, we put them on a wire brush just to clean up the areas where the pads ride on the pins, which are the raised areas on both ends. This is your retainer ball that holds the pin in place, and that actually runs from the inside. So we're going to install the upper pin first. And that's going to run through the pad over the top of the rotor. Line it up with the pole and then seat it with the hammer. And that's locked in. That's not going to go anywhere. Now we take our anti-rattle clip and we hook in underneath the top one. Make sure the two side springs are centered on the pads. Now what we've got to do is push this down far enough and then get the lower pin over the top of it. And then into the other pad and then into the other hole in the caliper. Seat it. And that's it, your pads are in place. All right, and don't forget, you got your retainer for the uh, hose and the uh, and the wheel speed sensor. Let's put that in there. That's the small bolt, 10 millimeter head. Okay, we snug that bolt in. check make sure there's no kinks or bends and make sure that the uh, wiring is in the retainer clips and there we go all right so we're going to show you how to replace the uh, pad depth sensor on the front of this 06 sport now in this particular vehicle we have the brembo brakes but the application is going to be the same whether you have the brembo or the standard brakes mostly it's not so much the pad side of it but where they put the connector up inside the liner now it's hidden in this area right about here where my finger is. So to get to it, we're going to need to pull the plastic pins that hold this corner. Now ideally they tell you you need to take the whole liner out, but you can actually just pull about four or five of those pins and actually peel this back a little bit, enough to get your hand up in there to change that, that connector. Now first off, before you even go to change it, you want to make sure that you have the correct piece now in this case you can see the end that was still retaining on here. You generally the end between <clears throat> the retainer that goes onto the bleeder and the connector end on the pad will be color coded. In this case this one was black. Here you can see a more vivid picture on the replacement. 
you got the same grommet this is your pad sensor you have black so you know you've got the right one all right so there are different ways to get those grommets out you can do it with a flat blade screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers you're probably gonna chew them up pretty bad so you may want to get replacements they actually do make some pliers that are designed for these these have a 90 degree grab these have an almost straight on grab or 15 degree and with those you can grab the the outer piece there actually are uh, detents so you can see in this case the 90 degree is going to actually be a better application okay here's what that retainer looks like with the pin out and essentially that's what you're doing is you're trying to grab underneath and lifting this pin up so that it is pulled out from the bottom area of the grommet which when it's pushed in spreads this out that's what locks it in place so we got two or three more we need to pull out of there and you'll find that you'll need to remove this one there's one right here there's another one right there and actually I think with those three we may be able to pull this out alright so just to give you a view of the, where the connector is we're gonna wheel in now I have to hold this Pad, but you can see by just pulling those three grommets I can pull this out far enough to give you visible access to that connector trouble is it's uh, sort of going to be a one-handed deal because you're going to need to hold this liner out of the way reach the other hand up and disconnect that sensor and that's just a push tab on the on the connector end that should pull right out of there okay so we have our old one out and what we're going to do now is install the new one I've sprayed a little bit of electrical contact cleaner on the end of this just to wet it down a little bit when you reach up in there it will make the connection a little bit easier because when you put the two together and squeeze them you want to feel a distinctive click so that you know that that tab is locked in and this isn't going to come disconnected down the road and turn your brake light on so again we pull back fortunately though once we're disconnected we get a little bit of slack on that wire and I wish I could kind of show you but this is done by feel but it locked right in and then if you remember when you took this apart you've got two wires that lock into a lock into a metal bracket that's up inside the or just out to the side of the the liner okay so now what we're doing to do is well, the trick is well, I forgot to mention on this this will sit like so in this metal bracket facing the wire now to the back of the vehicle and you're going to run this down right alongside the wheel speed sensor harness and you'll have another retainer here push that up in place you have these green plastic wire routes attached to the front brake hose your bracket mounted on the back of the knuckle and they push right in and it kind of makes a u-turn and then this final piece goes around the bleeder screw now you've taken the cap off the bleeder screw simply push that retainer I just showed you around the base and put the cap back on the bleeder so so then you end up with just the sensor end and that's going to simply go into a groove that's cut in the pad that's just going to insert like so gently push and it should seat you hear a click and you're in now on the Brembo's there's a little slot cut in the back of the of the uh, caliper you can push the wire in just to keep it clear of the wheel on uh, the standard brakes <clears throat> it's just going to sit exactly where you have it pushed in place as I say the application is pretty much the same and this actually applies to LR3 Sport LR4 this wiring design is similar similar in all three mostly because of the connector up in here you will need to access that so now that you've got your wire in, or your wire is routed, we put the three grommets back in. And that's just a matter of get it lined up with the hole, push it in. If it doesn't feel like it wants to run in easy, you can take your fingers and actually squeeze those two tabs at the bottom closer together. 
because when you push that button in, it's going to pretty much seat them anyway and spread them out so it holds. And we'll set those up in place. All right, grab it in place. You can just take a small ball peen or anything, just simply tap that outer tab right up into place. That'll spread the back of the grommet. So now you're back in. You're all set. So we replaced the brake pads, rotors. We've installed our pad sensor. We've showed you how to route it up in and through here. So when you're ready to do this on your sport or your LR3, just call any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. And thanks for watching.